underwater environment at Point Ice Islands, you see an, an amazing variety of life, even at a couple of square meters. It's just incredible, the colors and, and the life forms. You see the, the seaweed, the fish life, the, uh, uh, the underwater archways, the tunnels, uh, the interaction, the light coming through, and your ability to sort of go in through that dream world and experience that and find, learn about it. That feeling and that interaction is fantastic. I'm really pleased that uh, people start to understand the underwater world and the beauty that we've got and the significance of the poor nights. It's a jewel that New Zealand has got and it's really good to see it being recognised as well. I'm Jeroen Jonge Jans, I'm uh, the Managing Director of Dive to the Kaka. It's a uh, charter boat company taking people out to the Poor Nights Islands. It's mainly dive charters, but we also do snorkeling, sightseeing, kayaking and things like that. It's been growing quite a bit in the last 10 years. Uh, we used to sort of take about 5,000 people out. We're now taking close to 14,000 people out per annum. We've been entering Tourism Awards since uh, 2001, 2002. First time we entered, we became finalists and we were pretty stoked with, with that. Um, a couple of years later, we entered again and we actually won the Qualmark Award. Uh, the year afterwards, we entered again and we won the inaugural Doc One. And on top of that, we won the Supreme Award, which uh, really made for a hell of a party. But it's, it's great to sort of enter these awards and, and to f keep on developing. You can keep on pushing, never give up. Just, just keep on going. I think that's important. Would, would you describe your operation as an ecotourism operation? Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting one. Well, as long as you try to minimise your impact, uh, I think you can confidently say you can be an eco-operator. Yeah. Our climate change is it's a very interesting opportunity at the moment. I see it as an opportunity for us to differentiate and for us to sort of change the way we sort of uh, interact with the planet, be a bit smarter with it on all sorts of levels. Um, there are no silver bullets at the moment, as you do this and everything will be right. Um, it's quite a complicated kind of a business, but if you sort of focus on trying to make small steps on different levels and create the awareness, um, I do believe that we will come up with some very good solutions. Sustainability, um, environmental sustainability in, in, in today's world with overpopulation and all the other things that are happening, we will have to make a contribution. It's, it's, it's the balance yeah, that you need to get between the environment, yeah, uh, the, the social side of, of your community, uh, the cultural side and of course the economic side. Yeah. Yeah. We take our customers out and, and talk to them about the, the value of marine reserves, marine protection. And a lot of people are not aware of that and it's amazing when people actually find out about it how much they pick up from it, how enthusiastic they get. Because if you look at a bit of water like over here, everything looks sort of stable, but you can't see what's happening underwater. And the divers really are people's eyes underwater. So we have an ability to sort of see what's going on. And, and by making people aware of what is happening over there is a, is a big contribution. We also work with the Department of Conservation quite a bit. Um, myself, I'm on the... Uh, uh, conservation board which is very very important. We work with uh, northern tourism operators to look at sustainability issues in our area. Um, we do recycling, all those kind of bits and pieces, work with the community, just generally try to make sure that the environment in which we operate, we look after it and actually try to enhance it as much as we can but definitely make sure that we don't uh, make it any worse because of our interactions. Um, we are going out to a marine reserve um, so we don't put anything in the water except for you guys. We try and recycle as much as we can rather than putting it into the rubbish. Okay. How's that sound? Cool. Awesome. We've set up an, an, a number of systems within our company uh, with regards to how we do the recycling uh, and what we do with, uh, for example, tank fills and how we... Uh, a whole number of actions that, that are uh, in, in place within our company um, are based on our um, involvement with the sustainability project and the lessons we've learned over there from light bulbs to recycling to yeah, minimizing waste to uh, minimizing fuel if we can, uh, all those kind of things, they're part and parcel of it. And so that is just uh, normal daily practice for everybody who comes into our business and they pick it up pretty quick. 
And if there are any smart ideas that they think that we can do better, um, don't worry, our staff will tell us. That's always good. To the four nights. Uh, what we've done is we've come from two to character, obviously. Which, uh, if you look at, if we're starting out now, um, I would really make sure that my business has got this sort of wider viewpoint with regards to how it operates. In the sense that financially, business has to be stacking up, but you've got to look at the, uh, the, the community you work in and the environment you work in because they all work together with you. If you line them up well, you can't um, build a business in isolation without taking care of those aspects as well. So even though in the beginning of your business you might just be very much focused on, on the financial side of making it work, which is important, but don't lose track of the other ones as well because they are actually adding to your business. What I think we have, we have enormous opportunities over here in, in New Zealand. We have a fantastic environment. If, if we can't be carbon neutral and smart about all the things that we're doing in our environment, in the rest of the world they don't have a lot of a, a, lot of a chance. So let, let's make use of that opportunity and let's make some really smart decisions. And, and I know I'm talking from the marine environment all the time, but get more marine protection in place. You know, think about long-term plans, uh, world heritage parks, uh, and then the way we interact with them, you know, lower the impact as much as we can, um, be critical about what we do, and be smart and innovative in the solutions that we make. Um, it will be an interesting you know, next decade. A lot of things are happening really rapidly around the world. Lots of innovative new ideas will come out with transportation, etc. We just gotta make sure that we're on the forefront of all of that, rather than, you know, so being a leader rather than a follower. And, New Zealand has always been a leader in things like that, so I see no reason why, from a cultural point of view within New Zealand, why we can't be innovative and, and, and clever with it. Mm -hmm.